Hey guys, it's Brian here. This is the first episode of Foxy Roxy. So basically what this is going to be is me just building a car and I'm going to document along the way, help people out. Uh, I'm a pretty average dude, not a ton of money. Uh, and we're going to do this, you know, kind of on a budget sometimes. There's some parts that I'm spending a little more on, some that I won't. Um, so we're just going to document it as we go. I wanted to do this, number one, for my future, you know, so I can like look back and like, wow, look how far I came. And second is that there are some things I want to cover that is not a normal thing that's covered, you know? Um, so just stuff that will help the average person who's trying to learn this stuff, who's trying to look into it, understand it more than if you just Google it and, you know, an expert comes up and he starts explaining the whole thing to you. You know what I mean? You want the bare, I guess what I'm saying is I'm going to give you the bare basics of what you need to know to upgrade or replace parts, you know? So... That's what we're gonna do. So today, guys, all we're gonna do is just a coolant tank. That's the addition to the radiator I bought. So it's gonna be small episode today, nothing super exciting, but it's still, I can run you through. We can introduce the car, it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, so without further ado, let's show you Foxy Roxy. There she is, guys. Foxy Roxy, the 81 Fox Body Mustang. Right now, as she sits, runs great, has a 302 out of a 1996 Ford Explorer and an automatic transmission with a shift kit. Shifts extremely hard. Eventually you want to get that T5 swapped, but for right now, runs great. So we're gonna focus on the smaller stuff, cosmetics, and kind of work our way up as I can financially afford getting to those parts, you know? So right now on the front of the car, we're just rocking a, some stock disc brakes, which you can feel it when you brake though. Um, you know, I originally painted them blue, uh, but the, the blue's coming off, you know, it's simple wear and tear. But eventually we'll get some big brakes and it'll be fine. In the back, we're just running uh, drum brakes. But you still, like, with that V8 in it, you definitely feel the brakes. I really have to push on and get them to stop. So that's something we need to look into at some point. But we're going to get there eventually. You know, it just takes time. If you look at the front, we have an 87 front clip. And the headlight, obviously, is uh, super watertight, as you can see. So we're going to need to address at least that, that headlight. Um... I'm assuming I'm probably going to have to get a whole new pair because I don't really think they sell them one single, you know what I mean? So we're going to have to look that over and see what we want to go from there. Tinted, not tinted, LEDs possibly, we'll have to see. Into the interior we go. As you can see, the car was red on red. Door panel, the in outside was originally red and the interior was red. So they repainted the outside, but they did not repaint the inside or even cover it up. Uh, so right now that door panel's off just because of the fact that last year the window wouldn't go down, but I haven't gotten a motor for it yet. But now both windows won't go down, so that's why the sunroof's out. So a lot of cosmetic stuff on the inside, I mean, like, I need to take that carpet out and actually replace the floor pans. They're pretty rotted under there. But frame-wise, we're pretty good. Um, and she goes. You know, that's really all she needs is to go. So... But obviously, I'd like to, I, my goal is I want to completely turn this interior into the same color as the paint job. Um, make it really match when it's all said and done. It'll be really nice. So, yeah, right now that's where she sits. We're just kind of working on it as we go. So here's what we're working with motor-wise. Runs like a champ, has tons of power. Needs good cleaning, though. I got, I'm hopefully going to do that today. Clean it all up, make it look better than it was. But as you can see, you have spots of red, you know, spots of red. And the wiring's not exactly the best. But we're going to work on it over time. We're going to get it to where it needs to be. So what we're doing today, though, is we're, we're talking about this radiator. So I finally got a brand new radiator after the last one exploded. Um, they had a fan on there originally. And that worked fine. But it was good to get a new radiator in it anyway. So it's a lot cooler. It runs better. And uh, got us a new radiator lip right there. I didn't realize that at first. The original radiator was screwed into the, the front clip. So... It's much better to have that on there now, and it works better, so. Right now, though, we're rocking a windshield washer fluid container as our tank. And I've replaced the radiator, I've got the new cowl on there. You know, I want it to look nice, you know what I mean? That just doesn't make it look nice. Obviously, this wiring I gotta take care of, too. But that was just so I could bring it up from my, my uh, mom's house at the time. So, we got a long way to go. Definitely a lot of cleanup involved, but I think once we get it clean, it'll look really nice. So guys, what we're installing today is just a simple coolant overflow tank. All it is, uh, shout out to LMR. I used them a lot recently. I just got my radiator from there. Um, you know, they do financing too, which is nice. It helps out. 
But basically, all it is is a big tube, and when you know you hook up the, your your hose, when it gets overheated, dumps fluid in. When it cools off, it sucks fluid back up. Simple as that. Nothing too too fancy. I know probably most of you know what that is. Um, I just do it more or less in case you don't. So we're gonna install that today. We're gonna find a place to mount them. Got some mounting brackets here. Should be hopefully a wicked easy install. And then we're gonna start cleaning up the bay. We're gonna start, you know, uh, brushing it off, washing it doing some Dremel rotary, trying to clean up that aluminum, make it really shine, you know? So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So in the process of trying to find a spot for this tank, this coolant tank, I just took the windshield wiper tank right out. I said, you know what? It's dirty, it's old, I'll replace it later once I get everything working with the windshield wiper. So I just took it right out and I was like, well, I'll just take the whole tube out, I'll replace it later. It's not a big deal, it's cheap. Uh, so as I get going, uh, I ran into a snag at the cowl. So just so you guys know, I'll show you what I mean. So in case anyone ever has a question how you take the cowl off, I can show you. So as you can see, I've already got the cowl off and everything, but the windshield wiper blades are what would confuse me at first. So when they're on there like this, when they sit on there, that little tab right there goes in and out. So use a flathead screwdriver, pry it out, and you can pull the whole thing right off. CJ Pony Parts has a good video. That's where I found it. But I'll link it in the description just so you know. And then once you get to the cowl, there's about six bolts in the cowl. Little Phillips head should be easy to get them off, no problem. And uh, once you pull it up, right there where your wash fluid hose would connect, I just, one Phillips head, boom, it's off. As you can see, it's pretty good to take this off, get this all cleaned up, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll show you when it's done. So guys, what's crazy is just vacuuming out of there. You can't really see it very well, but there's a whole rat's nest in there. I mean, it's absolutely crazy how fast that stuff grows. Or who knows how long it's been there now, Abby. So it's just good for it to get the vacuum out, suck it right out of there, get it out of there so you don't have any more problems. Guys, so I took the washer fluid tank out. Boom, it's over there. Now I put the new coolant reservoir in there. Boom, there she is. She's pretty sturdy. I actually had to mount it down here. I'm leaving this extra bracket there just to be, so later if I want to install it, just to be safe, I can install it somewhere else. But I installed it down here because I tried to install it on the radiator itself, but it wouldn't make it past the hood. When the hood shut, it just completely destroyed that. I didn't realize it. So I mounted it down here. Already got it hooked up to the hose. Should be all set. We're not touching anything. We're not rubbing. And it seems to dump out way down there. I can't really get you a good view, but yeah, it dumps down there by that hose. Should be fine. Don't see a problem with it. Uh, we're going to run it. We're going to see what happens. I hey guys. So that's it. That's the first video. Uh, you kind of got to lay out the car. You know what we're working with. We're going to keep adding more parts and whenever we can, when we can afford it. That's kind of the whole point. It's a budget build. But if I can just help somebody, that'd be great. And I also am excited to look back on this eventually and see the progress I made to where the car is now. So if you want to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, I know it's not highest quality. It's not. I'm no trained mechanic either. That's probably a weird spot to put your reservoir, but it works. And... So that's what I'm going to go with for now. And when I get my wash fluid tank, I'll rearrange stuff. We'll go from there. But again, I want to say thanks for watching. This is the first episode. Project build. Thanks for stopping by.